Emily, thanks. Emily Wilkins in Washington will be on the lookout for more decisions this morning. Meantime, results of the latest Delivering Alpha investor survey are out, bringing together the market intelligence of some of the country's leading institutional investors, top strategists, and our own CNBC contributors. We asked them for their outlooks for Q3 and beyond. Here are some results. 61% believe we have entered a new bull market. 39% believe this is a bear market rally. BMO Capital Markets Chief Investment Strategist Brian Belsky has a target of 4550 joins us this morning. Brian, you were part of this. Uh, talk about what you see for the second half. Thanks so much, Carl. And it's, it's wonderful to be back on, on the show. Thank you so much for having us. You know, uh, we raised our target to 4550 right after Memorial Day. And when we came into 2023, we said that the October lows were in place and that a new cyclical bull market was beginning part of our 25-year secular bull market call. A lot of people didn't believe us. But I think the market has shown that the worst-case scenario has not occurred with respect to a spiking inflation and a Fed that was late. And so given the resilience of, of the market and stocks in particular being able to take on this 500 basis point increase uh, in interest rates and now with what's happening with Treasuries, we still are very positive. But, you know, given that we are at 4550, uh, that's a tepid return from here. And I'm here to tell you, Carl, I hope I'm wrong. I, I hope I'm wrong at 4550. In fact, <laughs> uh, our bull case, our bull case is 5050, meaning brand new price highs of over 5,000 on the S&P 500. And what we believe could drive that is surprising earnings growth, especially in the fourth quarter. And we think it's going to come from our three overweight sectors, that being technology, communication services, and, yes, financials. Right. Do you think if to the degree that there is a FOMO positioning chase in the next six months, is it about feeling that you're missed out on equities or feeling like you missed out on great returns and fixed income? Wow, that's a great question. I think it's kind of both because... Uh, if you just, everyone's so focused on tech, Carl, and we know that. And I think you have to kind of take two steps back and look what's happened to tech so far this year. We've had three very distinctly different tech rallies. Number one was the January effect rally, meaning in January the majority of stocks that outperformed the market were those that massively underperformed in 2022. The second tech market was in March when a lot of investors wanted to maintain their positions in the overall stock market sold financials and bought big market cap tech. And we know what they are. We talk about them every day on the network. Number three, the mental move, and that's the AI move. And that's when we started to see earnings expectations for the tech sector begin to move in, in uh, March, April, and May to the point where tech sector earnings now are outpacing the S&P 500. With respect to bonds, Given the fact that, again, no one's really talking about this whole pace and path to normalization, we actually think that this is all part of the normalization phase where you're going to have 10-year treasuries in a 3 to 4% range, earnings growth in a high single-digit range, market performance in high single-digit, low double-digit range. That's a really great position to have in both bonds and stocks going forward for at least the next three to five years.